Welcome back to Deal Unboxing. If you're ready to make a move to Wi-Fi 6E network, the Netgear Nighthawk RAXE 450 AXE 10000 is one of the few routers available in the market that offers 6G Wi-Fi band. So in this in-depth review, we will do a Wi-Fi speed, coverage and performance test and see if upgrading to Wi-Fi 6E is really worth it. So please sit back, relax and enjoy the review. Also please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. First let's do a quick unboxing. The unit comes with quick start guide, Wi-Fi 6E router, power adapter and an ethernet cable. Now let's look at the specs. The Wi-Fi 6E router is powered by 64-bit quad-core CPU running at 1.8 GHz, 512 MB flash, 1 GB RAM, supports AXE 10000 tri-band Wi-Fi 6E, 12.4G, 15G and a new 6G band. OFDMA, PSS coloring, beam forming, mu mimo 8 internal antennas, WPA3, 160 MHz channel supports for both 5 GHz and 6 GHz bands. In the connection options, router has 4 1 GB LAN ports, 2.5 GB WAN port for internet or LAN, and a 1 GB WAN port as well. There are also two USB 3 Type-A ports on the side. There are two buttons on the front that allows you to toggle Wi-Fi connection on and off and connect devices via VPS. Let's talk about design and features. The Netgear Wi-Fi 6E router has a clean design but overall solid construction. It has 8 internal antennas and you cannot remove them, but overall body dimensions are big. The router can be wall mounted and there's a lot of ventilation on the top and bottom and there's also a top mounted fan to keep the powerful hardware temperature under control. The router is configured for maximum performance and coverage up to 2500 square feet. It is a tri-band Wi-Fi 6E router with total networking speed of about 10,000 megabits per second. And following is a breakdown. The 2.4G can deliver up to 0.912 gigabits per second. The 5G band can deliver up to 3.84 gigabits per second. And a 6G band can deliver up to 4.8 gigabits per second. And those max speeds are only possible with the right client hardware. So your speeds will vary. Now let's do some performance coverage and speed test. So we place the Netgear Wi-Fi 6E router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it. And it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test, we are using Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card installed in our laptop. Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card is the only Wi-Fi card in the market that is supposed to support Wi-Fi 6E router with the latest drivers. But at this time of the review, that is not the case. So at the time of this review, the following is the only method that would allow you to use AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card to work with Wi-Fi 6E router's 6G band in Windows 10. I will also post this information in the description below and also on Deal Unboxing website. So following are the steps. Make sure you're running Windows 10 version 2004 aka 2020 update or higher. Install the latest Intel AX210 driver from Intel's website. Then run the following command in the command window to confirm the OWE is supported and confirm the latest drivers are installed. Then you have to make a register change to enable 6G for AX210 wireless card. I will leave all the information in the description below so you can follow the steps. According to Intel, the latest drivers that will support and enable 6G band will be available later this year. So let's get back to the test. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. I will be testing Wi-Fi connection in different corners and floors of the house to see how well Wi-Fi 6E router performs in terms of Wi-Fi speed and coverage. In this test, we will use iPerf3 performance test. So if you're not familiar with iPerf3, it is a tool to measure maximum bandwidth on a wireless and wired networks. Okay, so here as you can see on the screen, all three Wi-Fi bands are set up separately. Also, we will be using all three bands in our test for best performance results. Also, both 6G and 5G band is set to 160 MHz bandwidth. And Netgear also allows you to select your channels, bandwidth or leave it to auto. So let's get started. I have one gig Verizon Fios connection. And for the first test, I have a connected to MacBook Pro to the router via Ethernet cable and we're getting close to 1 gig internet speed, confirming the router can handle 1 gig internet speed without any problem. Now for the first Wi-Fi speed test, I have placed the laptop with Wi-Fi 6E card installed right next to the router and as you can see we are connected to 6G channel with speed up to 2.4 gigabits per second, confirming the 160 MHz channel is working correctly for both 6G and 5G bands. First we run iProf3 tests using 6G on the laptop and we're using 5 streams instead of single stream. With iPerf 3 5 streams, we're able to get max speed up to 928 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then we ran the iPerf 3 test using 5G band 
and we were able to get max speed up to 901 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then we ran the iPod 3 test using 2.4G band at the same location and we were able to get 127 megabits per second. And when comparing these numbers against the ASUS AXE 11000 Wi-Fi 6E router we previously reviewed on the channel, the numbers look very similar. And when comparing against Wi-Fi 6 routers, results look good as well. Now for the second test, I'm standing 30 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6E router in the basement with a couple of walls between Wi-Fi router and the laptop. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection for all three Wi-Fi bands. First connected to 6G wireless connection and running iProf 3 with 5 streams, I was able to achieve 222 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then using 5G wireless connection with iProf 3 5 streams, I was able to achieve 485 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to 2.4G at the same location and using iProf 3 speed test using 5 streams, I was able to achieve 142 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. And when comparing these numbers against the ASUS AXE 11000 Wi-Fi 6E router, the results again look very similar. And when comparing against the Wi-Fi 6 router's 5G band, the numbers are starting to look bad. Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a third Wi-Fi speed and connection test. I still have good Wi-Fi connection signals here. First connected to 6G wireless connection and using iProf 3 with 5 streams, I was able to achieve 235 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then using 5G wireless connection with iProf 3 5 streams, I was able to achieve 331 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to 2.4G at the same location and using iProf 3 speed test using 5 streams, I was able to achieve 140 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. So here comparing these numbers against the ASUS AXC 11000 Wi-Fi 6E router, the Netgear 6G band was able to post double the bandwidth here. But when compared against the Wi-Fi 6 router's 5G bands, the results again fell really short. Now let's move to the far left side of the house and close to 60 feet from the Wi-Fi 6E router with the floor and few walls between router and laptop. This is the toughest spot in the house as we have seen in the previous tests. And first thing we have noticed is that 6G and 5G bands are still connected but low signal strength. But 2.4G band have decent Wi-Fi signals here. First connected to 6G wireless connection and running iPod 3 with 5 streams, I was able to achieve 26 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then using 5G wireless connection at the same location with iPod 3 5 streams, I was able to achieve 26 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to 2.4G at the same location and using iPod 3 speed test using 5 streams, I was able to achieve 109 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. So again comparing these numbers against the ASUS 11000 Wi-Fi 6E router, the 6G was able to connect and produce some numbers, whereas the ASUS AXE 11000 wasn't able to connect at all. But again comparing against the router's 5G band, Netgear lost to ASUS badly. And when comparing against the Wi-Fi 6 routers, the Wi-Fi 6E routers look terrible. Now let's move to the far right side of the house and close to 30 feet from the Wi-Fi 6E router with the floor and few walls between router and the laptop. Here now you have good Wi-Fi signals for all three wireless bands. First connected to 6G wireless connection and running iProf 3 with 5 streams, I was able to achieve 114 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then using 5G wireless connection at the same location with iProf 3 5 streams, I was able to achieve 252 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to 2.4G at the same location and using iProf 3 speed test using 5 streams, I was able to achieve 131 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. So looking at the results for 6G test, the Netgear was able to beat ASUS by double the bandwidth, but lost in the 5G test. But when compared against the Wi-Fi 6 routers, things are still looking bad for Wi-Fi 6E routers. And let's move to the second floor of the house. Here we have two floors and few walls between Wi-Fi 6E router and the laptop. Here we have very good Wi-Fi connection for all three bands. First connected to 6G wireless connection and running iProf 3 5 streams, I was able to achieve 313 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then using 5G wireless connection with the iProf 3 5 streams, I was able to achieve 578 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to 2.4G at the same location and using iProf 3 5 streams, I was able to achieve 150 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. So looking at the numbers for both 6G and 5G test here, Netgear and ASUS look very similar. But compared against the Wi-Fi 6 router, they fall in the middle to low part of the pack, which is again kind of disappointing. Now we're going to do our router's network Ethernet speed test. In this test, we have both our iPod 3 server and client laptop connected to the router by Ethernet. And using iPod 3 5 streams, we were getting close to 1 gig bandwidth speed as expected. Finally, we tested the USB 3 read and write speed on the router. 
For that, we configure the file server on the router and configure our USB 3 flash drive as a shared storage. In this test, we transfer close to 5 GB file by 2.4 GB wired connection and we achieve close to 150 MB per second for both read and write speeds. But switching to 1 GB NIC, we average around 112 MB per second read and write speed. So 1 GB connection was a limiting factor. Now let's talk about the router setup. The router setup was very easy 3 step process. All you have to do is download the Netgear router app to your Android or iOS device. Connect your router to your modem or if you have Fios connection with Ethernet connection, you can connect the router's WAN port directly to the Ethernet cable and you don't need a modem. Then just follow the instructions in the app to complete the setup. Or you can set up using your web browser. So if you own a Netgear router in the past, you will find the interface very similar. The web setup has a very clean interface with ton of options to choose. So we are going to go over the settings very quickly to see what are the available options. On the main screen, you have an option to choose basic settings and advanced settings. You will also find the internet status, wireless SSID, number of connected devices, USB share, guest network and security status. So let's go through the advanced settings. First you have a router information, wireless settings for all three bands and also guest network settings and information. Then continue to the left column we have a setup wizard, VPS wizard followed by the setup options. Here you have an internet setup. Then under advanced settings you have all wireless settings available. You can set up wireless settings for all three bands. 2.4G, 5G and 6G band or you can combine them into a single SSID. As you can see both 5G and 6G channels support 160MHz channel bandwidth with DFS channels and WPA3 security settings. Here you can also select channels and bandwidth for each channel as well. Transmit power, security settings and more. Then continue down the left column WAN setup followed by the LAN setup followed by the guest network. Then we have USB functions to configure USB share or use as a media server for attached devices. Then continue down the left column we have a security options, here you can set up access control, block sites, block services, schedule internet and email notifications. I'm a little bit disappointed by the lack of printer control options here. Then continue down the left column we have administration settings, here we have a router information, logs, attached devices information, backup settings and also you can set up password for admin, NTP settings and router's firmware update option. But you don't have to set up all these settings if you're not a power user. You can leave everything to default or you can use the Netgear app to complete the whole process quite fast. Let's do the final summary. Overall Netgear RXE 450 AXE 10000 Wi-Fi 6E router did not perform very well in this review. The router's overall performance was disappointing compared to the current lineup of Wi-Fi 6 router in the market and priced at around $450 at the time of this review, it is expensive. The 6GHz band was very limited range as expected. And I believe there's a lot of firmware progress that needs to be made to iron out the bug and get the most out of this expensive router. To make matters worse, as mentioned in our previous review, the current Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E adapter does not work with 6GHz band in the latest drivers. And there are no correct drivers out there to enable 6G band option for the adapter. Unless you go through the registry modification I mentioned earlier. But one thing for sure, the 6G band achieved the highest wireless bandwidth score we have seen in close range test, which is promising. So it is hard to recommend the Wi-Fi 6E router at this point. I would recommend waiting until the Wi-Fi 6E standards are finalized and there are more devices out there to benefit from the 6G band and there are improved drivers and firmware available. But if you're in the market for your next wireless router, I would recommend going through the current line of Wi-Fi 6 routers and save money for future upgrades. Unless you are willing to spend extra and have Wi-Fi 6E devices available to benefit from the 6G band. Let me know what you guys think of Netgear RXE 450 AXC 10000 Wi-Fi 6E router in the comments below. So if you like this video please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.